In this video, we're going to use the work kinetic energy theorem to determine how much work is required to speed up a car from rest. Now, in a previous video, we had a car with an initial velocity of zero meters per second, that is, it started from rest, and then we applied a force to that car, causing it to increase its velocity to a final velocity of 20 meters per second. So if you recall, a force had to act in this direction, which caused it to accelerate in this direction. And one of the pieces of information that I didn't give you in the last video was that the mass of the car was equal to exactly 1,000 kilograms. So what we're going to do now is we're going to apply the work kinetic energy theorem to figure out how much energy is required to speed up this car from rest to a final velocity of 20 meters per second. Now there's going to be two reasons that we're going to use the work kinetic energy theorem in this case to figure out how much work is required to speed up this car. The first reason is we don't know the distance over which this force acts. And the other thing that we don't know is how long it takes to speed up this car. Because if we knew how long it took to speed up this car, we could figure out the car's acceleration, and then we could figure out how much force was required to accelerate this car. But in this case, we don't know either of these two things. And that's why the work kinetic energy theorem is so useful, because it says that the work required to speed up or slow down an object only depends on the change in the object's kinetic energy. Now in this case, the change of kinetic energy can be written as one half the mass of the car times the final velocity of this car squared minus one half the mass times the initial velocity of the car squared. Now in this case, the initial velocity of this car is zero, so this entire term becomes zero. So we can rewrite the change in kinetic energy of this car as one half the mass of the car times the final velocity of the car squared. Now in this case, this is going to work out to be one half of 1,000, which is the mass of the car, kilograms, times the final velocity squared. This car comes up to a final velocity of 20 meters per second, and we're going to square the entire term. Now, one half of a thousand works out to be 500 kilograms. And then we're going to multiply this by 20 squared, and 20 squared works out to be 400 meters squared per second squared. And then when you multiply 500 by 400, you get 200,000. And then a kilogram times a meter squared per second squared works out to be a unit of energy, a unit of a joule. So by using the work kinetic energy theorem, we figured out that the work required to speed up this car works out to be 200,000 joules. Now let's do one more example. In the previous video, we also tried to figure out how much work was required to stop a car that was initially traveling with a velocity of 20 meters per second and bring it to rest, bring it to a final velocity of zero meters per second. We pointed out that in order for this to happen, there had to be a force acting in the opposite direction that the car was moving, and that this force would cause this object to accelerate in the opposite direction that this car was moving. That is, it would cause this car to slow down. And just to keep a few key concepts in mind, that the velocity vector was in this direction, and when the acceleration and velocity vectors point in opposite directions, it means that the object's going to slow down. So what we're going to do now is we're going to apply the work kinetic energy theorem to this case to figure out how much work is required to slow this car down. In this case, we're going to say that the work equals the change in this object's kinetic energy. And again, this is going to equal one half the object's mass times the final velocity of this object squared minus one half of the object's mass times the initial velocity squared. Now in this case, the object's final velocity is zero. So this entire term becomes zero. And so we can rewrite the change in kinetic energy as minus one half the mass of the car times the initial velocity of the car squared. And so when we work this out, this is going to work out to be minus one half the mass of the car, which we said was 1,000 kilograms, times the initial velocity squared, which was 20 meters per second, and we're going to square the entire term. And this works out to be minus one half of 1,000 kilograms, works out to be minus 500 kilograms, and 20 meters per second quantity squared works out to be 400 meters squared per second squared. And then when you multiply minus 500 times 400, you get minus 200,000 kilogram times a meter squared per second squared works out to be a unit of a joule. So the energy required to bring this car to a stop works out to be minus 200,000 joules. Now there's one warning that needs to be made before ending this video, and it's a concept that I'll pick up in the next video. And that result is most apparent when you combine the definition of work, which says that work equals force times the distance over which that force acts, and the work kinetic energy theorem. Now since the definition of work as force times distance gives us one way to calculate work, and the work kinetic energy theorem gives us another way to calculate the work required to speed up or slow down an object, we can combine these two terms into one equation that says force 
times the distance over which that force acts equals the change in the object's kinetic energy. Now the great thing about the work kinetic energy theorem is it allows us to calculate the energy required to speed up or slow down an object. But one of the things that it does in and of itself is leaves us ignorant of how big of a force is required to speed up or slow down that object. Because this force can act over either a small distance or a large distance. That is, we can calculate the same work required to speed up an object if that force is large acting over a short distance, or we could calculate the same work if that force is small acting over a large distance. Now this is a very important concept that I'll bring up in the next video.